This is your day, the April, April the 2nd, 2017. The scripture that the Holy Spirit gave us in the, on this year day is Revelation 10 verses 2 to 5. Revelation 10 verses 2 to 5. I read. And he had in his hand a little book open. And he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth, and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me seal up the seal up those things which the seven thunders of uttered and write them not and of good this is the word of god for today father we give you glory we give you honor we give you praise today the lord tells us about the distraction of thunders Distraction of thunders. Distraction of thunders. The apostle in verse 1 saw another representation like an angel. The person communicating this discovery was most likely our Lord and Savior, Yahshua Christ. Or it was to show his glory. He veils his glory, which is too great for mortal eyes to behold, and throws a veil upon his dispensations. A rainbow was on, on his head. Our Lord Yahweh is always mindful of his covenant. The first uh, uh, part of this sermon the open book of knowledge the open book of knowledge we're going to interpret verse 2 of the scripture of the day it says and he had in his hand a little book open end of quote this is the first thing that indicated the purpose of his appearing to evangelist john to your apostle john or that would give any distinct indication of the design of his coming from Yahweh, from heaven. What is the natural significance of the emblem of book? For between quote, the little book, the little book, that expression, the word used here is Biblaridion because these texts are written, the original texts are written in Greek language. Biblaridion, which occurs nowhere else in the New Testament, except in this, in the, in this chapter, uh, Revelation 10, verses 8 to 10 uh, of this chapter. The word was evidently chosen here to denote something that was special in the size or form of the book or, or to distinguish it from the ordinary word employed to denote a book. The word properly denotes a small roll or volume or little scroll, you know, the ancient ancient books were scrolled that were rolled by by the hebrews there is a book in revelation 5 verse 1 uh, that was that that was clearly a large volume this one was a small was so small that it could be taken in a, in the hand and could be represented as eaten eaten as we see it in verses 9 to 10 on of Revelation 10. But of what is a book an emblem of? A book as such 
Thus born in the hand of an angel coming down to the world would be an indication that something of importance was to be communicated to people or that something was to be accomplished by the agency air book. It was, it was uh, as in Revelation 6 verse 2, a bow, a bow, an emblem of conquest, or in Revelation, in, in verse 4 here, a sword, a sword, an emblem of battle, or in or on verse 5, a pair of scales, an emblem of, uh, of exactness, uh, with which things were to be determined. But this book, this, this was a book, this was a book, not the other emblems in, 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 uh, that I just uh, listed. A speechless, silent thing, yet mighty, a mighty thing, not designed to carry desolation through the earth, but to diffuse light and truth. The natural interpretation then would be, would, would be that something was to be accomplished by the agency of the book, or that a book was to be the prominent characteristics of all of the times, of the times, as, as the bow, the sword, and the balances, the scales uh, had been in the previous periods. As to the size of the book, this was to be brought about not by extended tomes, volumes of books, but by a comparatively small volume, so that it would be taken in a hand, so that it could, without impropriety, be represented as eaten, as eaten by an individual. And because it is small, it wouldn't be hard to eat it. By the diminutive size of the book, let us understand that, compared to all the knowledge Yahweh has in store, the portion humans can take, can absorb, can eat, is small. I quote this scripture that says it. I quote, the secret things belong unto Yahweh our God, but though the things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law, end of quote. This is quoting Deuteronomy 29 verse 29. We are unable to know how numerous and big are the secret things, the secret things of God. But this Yahweh scripture that the Holy Spirit gave us to us only tell us that those things Yahweh reveals to us are a small book, one we can absorb, one we can eat. And as he said, it says the fact. Let us explain why the the, the fact that it was open. Why was it open? It was now open so that its contents could be read. A book is meant to be read. By which it means not the Bible, the scriptures of the Old and New Testament, or the books of the Gospel. They do not, they do not, it does not mean necessary those, the substance of which lies in, in, in a little room or is no other than the preaching of Christ, the preaching of Christ, the preaching of Christ, and the preaching of Christ crucified, the, pre the preaching of Yahweh as a way to salvation, the preaching which is now more open and manifest and more clearly made known unto the sons of men under the gospel dispensation that it was before. Then the scripture says, And he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth, which signifies that he was lord and possessor of both, both the sea and the earth, of the whole land he was possessor of the water globes, 
the water, the, the, I mean the land and water globe, being the maker and supporter of it, and that this gospel should be spread all over the world, both on the continent and in the islands of the sea. And that is that, and that his kingdom should be from sea to sea, from a river to the ends of the earth, as Yahshua says when he sends us with the great, the great commission. That the abundance of the sea should be converted to him, or, or the, the, maritime, the, the, the maritime parts of the world should be, should be sub, subject to the, to the scepter of his grace and government. Remember, remember that sea represents worldly philosophies, worldly doctrines, paganism, idolatry, and the islands in the scripture uh, of it represent the converted Gentiles. The converted, the islands are in the sea. You know, the islands emerge from the sea, and those are the Gentiles living among the pagans, which are the sea. And the scripture, and this also say with him putting one foot on the earth, the other in the sea, that the earth and the other uh, the, the uttermost part of it should be his possession. And it may be observed that he set his foot upon both the earth and the sea, out of which the two beasts, remember of the revelation, the two beasts arise as in Revelation 13 verse 1, which shall be destroyed by him. This is namely a special book of the affairs of Yahweh's church. For the book that contains the things belonging to the whole world is said to be kept with the Creator in Revelation 5 verse 1. But the book of the church which with the Redeemer uh, and out of this book the, 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 the book of the church is for the, with the Redeemer, the Yahshua Christ, and out of this book is taken the rest of the history of the Apocalypse, the book of Revelation. The second leg of this sermon, beware of the thunders corrupting God's voice. Beware of the thunders that corrupt God's word. Let us explain. Verse 3, it says, and cried with a loud voice. The angel that looked like Christ thus cried, that all might hear, and to show earnestness and affection, and that it was, it was a matter of great importance, as well as to denote the certainty of it, cry. And then the scripture, the whole uh, the set of this uh, uh, sentence uh, said, and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. The lion is the monarch of the, the monarch of the woods, and his roar is an image of terror. Yahshua is the lion of Judah, as we see it in Revelation 5, verse 5. The point of the comparison here seems to be the, the loudness, the loudness with which the angel cried and the power of what he said to our the world as the roar of the lion keeps the dwellers of the forest in our. What he says is not stated, nor did John attempt to record it. Then the scripture says, and when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. When he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Notice here, notice here that the seven thunders stroke after his lion-like cry. Our interpret one interpretation we can say is that his awful voice was echoed echoed by seven thunders, solemn and terrible ways of discovering the mind of Yahweh, which we call the interpretation of the word of, of, the word of God. We don't know the subject of the, of the seven thunders. Then in verse 4, verse, verse 4, we can translate it this way. And when the seven thunders spoke, 
I was about to ride and I heard a voice out of the heaven saying, Seal up the things which the seven thunders spoke and write them not. End of quote. He could have written down their utterances. It was no mere thunder like sound uh, he heard. The thunder spoke, the scripture said. And he would, have, he would have continued his writing as he had been commanded in Revelation 1 verse 11. Had not this voice out of heaven forbidden him. The utterances then are for those who hear them. They are not to be made generally known. It is, it, it, is it not solemn? sacred divine voice which is not to be known by all the scripture says that but they, they, they are to be known they are not to be known by all but by those who have ears when who have ears to hear when the god of glory thunders i quote lo he that sent forth his voice yea and that a mighty voice, end of quote, this is quoting Psalm 60, 68 verses, verse 33. Mankind may hear the thunder, only those whose ears Yahweh has opened can hear the utterances of the inspiring message which they may bring. So, so was it once in Yahshua's life in John 12 verses 28 to 29. The people said the voice from heaven thundered. Some thought an angel spoke. But there was articulate words which he who came to do God's will in whose heart was God's law heard. And to him that thunder-like voice promised to do I quote, glorify his name, end of quote. I said this is John 12 verses 28 to 29. Similarly here, similarly here, the evangelist who is to prophesy before peoples and kings, as in, uh, in verse 11 in this chapter, hears words spoken by the divine voice which make him strong for his mission. It is not the will of God that the glorious state of the church should arise from these the thunders. It is not the glory of God. It is not the will of God that those thunders, uh, 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 that, uh, that uh, the glorious state of God should arise out of these thunders, from these thunders, and be built on their laws and establishments. Let me explain. You would not hear what a thunder says, would you? The thunder strikes so strongly human ears that there is nothing to be heard except the emotions of fear, of panic, of confusion, and those all these troubles. In the imaginary of the Hebrews, thunder was regarded as the voice of Yahweh. And there are many, many scriptures for that. Job 37 verse 2, Job 30, uh, verse 4 verse 5, uh, Job 40 verse 9, Psalm 18 verse 13, Psalm 29 verses 3 to 9, Isaiah 30 verse 30 and 31. The imagination of thunders uh, also represents he who dwells behind the thunder clouds, as in Psalm 81 verse 7. And to the mind of the Jews, it was the symbol of divine power in Psalm 29 verse 3 and of vengeance, of divine vengeance in 1 Samuel 2 verse 10, 2 Samuel 22 verse 14. So voices denote truth divine, divine truth. Thunders denote that those who carry it and bring it from heaven to earth. Thunder denote those who carry that voice of God and bring and bring it to to for us. For the nature of thunder is that is re, it reverberates. Thunder always reverberates. It it makes echo. It is echoed. When they are human intermediaries, the thunders carry 
because those who carry uh, that message of God are the, the ones called thunders. So when they are humans, human intermediaries, thunders carry the word of God along with worldly corruption that stem from human interpretations. Thunders carry the word of God along with corruptions of human emotions and interpretations. A godly care is laudable but must be married with knowledge. Therefore, nothing is to be done but by the calling, calling, calling of Yahweh, with, with, which must be expected and waited for by the godly, the saint. Let us not be distracted, therefore, by the thunders of worldly churches and preachers. Only the voice of the Holy Spirit which has not been written is to be sought and listened to. Each Christian must be anointed of the Holy Spirit to get the knowledge, the knowledge, which is, which is nothing else but the knowledge of Christ. For the Holy Spirit fills the soul with the voice of God, not thunders. The Holy Spirit fills the soul from inside. He is the only one in the Trinity who teaches us all things, as it is said in John 14, verse 25. Only the Holy Spirit can make us eat the small book that is talked about, which is nothing else but Yahshua Christ. A church that does not give you the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a church of thunders, a worldly church. A barren church. A church is barren when there is no presence of God in it, when there is no presence of the Holy Spirit in it. Without the indwelling, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit dwelling in. Without the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, don't fool yourself thinking that you are a Christian. It is not because a human being has pronounced you a Christian that you are actually a Christian. You are a Christian only if you are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. To receive the grace of the Holy Spirit, you need to go through the narrow gate and small way, as it is said in Matthew 7 verse 14, which is, which is Yahshua Christ. This is also said in, uh, in, uh, in, in Isaiah 40 verses 3 to 4, to build to build a, 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 a highway for God in the wilderness. The wilderness is your heart. To open, to build a highway for, for, uh, for us. And we're going to talk about, about brokenness. You need to deny yourself. Deny all the fatness of the world. You need to shrink yourself from the size of a camel to that of a thread. That you may pass through the eye of the needle, as it is said in Matthew 19, verse 24, which is which which Christ is the eye of the needle. To receive the Holy Spirit, you need to deny yourself, carry your own cross, and after you deny yourself, you must follow only Christ, as it is said in Matthew 16, verse 24. You deny yourself. How do you deny yourself? You deny yourself and you carry your cross when you go through the three steps. Repentance, brokenness, humility. One is the start, the uh, repentance. The other, the, the last one is the end, humility. I can testify that in my entire experience of ministry, I have not seen another area where new converts fell as much as in the area of brokenness. Some even attack the counselor when they resist the brokenness. This is the area where we find application of the scripture, I quote, for many are called, but few are chosen. According to Matthew 22 verse 14. It is actually very hard for most people to part with the world. Very hard for them to get rid of the sources of sin in them. Very hard for them to gouge out the, and throw away the eye that makes them to sin. Very hard for them to, to cut off 
and throw away the arm that makes them uh, to sin, uh, as it is said in Matthew 18, verses 8 to 9. Brokenness is about destroying one's, uh, destroying in one's life pride, self, and all the sources of sin that stem from these two. Most gospel preachers have not completed their brokenness, and this can be seen in their frequent fall into the sins of greed, lies, fornication, idolatry, and all the ugly things that you hear about in the church. This is because in them there is no Holy Spirit. They have never been baptized. They have never built a, 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 a temple in their heart for God. And you know that when you build a temple, you have to, uh, to, to remove all the thorns, all the, all the, the bad herbs, as it is said in, 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 in Jeremiah 4 verse 4. You have to break, you have to break the, 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 the mountains to make the, the, the foundations of the, of the temple of your heart. You have to break pride, you have to break self. Because self, self, believing that we are little God, that we are God, that is what brought us the, in the fall with Adam and Eve. Only then, Yahweh may find you acceptable.